WandaVision is a TV series that is full of surprises. It's a show with a unique premise that is constantly changing and throwing new ideas at the audience. If you've seen it, you know that it starts off as this mysterious family sitcom that eventually develops into something darker. Now, if you haven't seen the show, let me warn you right up front that today we'll be heading deep into spoiler territory. And that's because I want to talk about one of the major plot twists that occurs toward the end of the season. I want to explore why this particular twist is so shocking, and I want to teach writers how to pull off plot twists in their own writing. Now, as I mentioned, WandaVision starts by throwing us into a family sitcom starring Wanda Maximoff and Vision from the Marvel Universe. If you go into this show completely blind, it may seem at first like this show is just going to be a lighthearted side story, but along the way we get ominous hints that the show is much more serious than it first appears. For instance, by the fourth episode, we learn that the town of Westview is the creation of Wanda's power, and that she's living in denial after the death of her lover Vision. This is the show's first major plot twist, but it's not necessarily a shocking one because the show constantly hints that something is wrong with this fantasy world. We know something is wrong, we just need to know exactly what the problem is. Now, the real shock is delivered later in the season, and that's when we learn that Agnes, a seemingly harmless side character, is actually a witch named Agatha Harkness who has been interfering with Wanda's fantasy world. This twist comes as a total shock to most viewers because it's well hidden while still being fair, meaning that there's plenty of evidence that we can look back on and say, oh, I should have realized that, I should have seen this coming. And that's the kind of impact that you want from a shocking plot twist. Now I want to look at how this twist was pulled off. Specifically, I'm going to focus on three reasons why it worked so well. And the first of these reasons is that the writers did such a great job of mixing story genres. WandaVision blends multiple genres, and whenever you have genres, you have audience expectations. For instance, if you're watching a spy thriller, you expect things like high-stakes action and life-threatening secrets and characters who are betrayed by someone they trust. But you don't expect those same things within the context of a family sitcom. In that case, you expect just the opposite. Low-stakes action, light-hearted humor, happy endings, things like that. Now, Agatha is introduced as a side character within the family sitcom world. She appears once or twice an episode, she delivers a joke, and she never seems like a major force in the story. Even mid-season, when the story shifts from family sitcom to superhero thriller, we still associate Agatha with the sitcom portion of the show. And while it's fair to expect a betrayal in a thriller story, you expect that betrayal to be committed by one of the characters in the thriller portion of the script. Thus, when it turns out that Agatha is actually the one who betrays Wanda, it comes as a great shock to the audience. Now, the second reason why this twist works so well is because we trust and underestimate Agatha. In order for betrayal to work, first you need trust, and audiences will naturally trust characters that they are familiar with, characters that we see again and again with consistency. We're also more likely to trust someone that the main character vouches for. When we see that Wanda is willing to let Agnes babysit her kids, that convinces us that Agatha is a good, responsible person. You don't leave your kids with someone unless they've earned your trust, and when we see that Wanda is willing to trust Agatha, we follow suit. Now, in addition to trusting Agatha, we also underestimate her, and we do this because she is constantly portrayed as a sitcom side character up until her big reveal. She's just this nosy neighbor from next door, someone who only shows up for a laugh or to support Wanda in some minor way. In other words, she's hiding in plain sight. Now, the third and final reason why this twist works so well is because there are other obvious opponents. And whenever you include multiple opponents or villains in your story, you can shift your audience's focus in different directions. And when you do that, that enables you to create a plot twist like the one in WandaVision. Now, before I delve into this reason, I want to explain a writing technique called Four Corners Opposition. This comes from John Truby's writing guide, The Anatomy of Story. And the easiest way to understand Four Corners Opposition is by picturing a square where your story's protagonist is at one corner, and then you have three opponents at the other corners. These opponents can be villains, but they don't necessarily have to be. An opponent can be any character who opposes your protagonist and forces them to change. Now, the idea behind Four Corners corners opposition is that you want your story to involve more than just two characters fighting back and forth, because that would get boring. You want your hero challenged in different ways by different opponents. This makes both the hero and the story more
more complex and interesting. For instance, if we wanted to apply Four Corners opposition to the original Star Wars movie, Luke Skywalker would obviously be our protagonist, and then we would have Darth Vader as his main opponent, the main villain, and Darth Vader, of course, represents the Empire. And you could have those two fighting back and forth, but eventually that would get stale, so you need some other opponents there. And in the case of the original Star Wars movie, you would have Han Solo and Obi-Wan Kenobi as Luke's opponents. Now, obviously, Han and Obi-Wan are not villains. They're not people who are out to try and kill Luke, but they do force him to change. They challenge him over the course of the story, and they serve as obstacles to him at different points as well. Now, in WandaVision, Wanda is, of course, the protagonist, and her most obvious opponent would be the S.W.O.R.D. agency, which is revealed at mid-season. S.W.O.R.D. is working against Wanda, and they're trying to force her to abandon her fantasy world and free the people of Westview. There's also another obvious opponent that most viewers will pick up on, and that's Vision. Throughout the story, he's asking questions, he's demanding answers, and he's pushing Wanda to reveal the truth. Vision wants to know why they have no history and why things are so mysterious around here. He's not a villain, but he does push Wanda to come to terms with reality. Now, while most audiences are focusing on the conflict between Wanda and Sword or Wanda and Vision, Agatha kind of gets forgotten in the background. We don't even consider her as an opponent until she's revealed to be a straight-up villain at the end of the sixth episode. Even though there are plenty of hints along the way that there's more to her as a character, most viewers won't notice because their attention is geared toward the main opponent's sword and the secondary opponent vision. It's like a magic trick where you're distracted by one thing while there's sleight of hand going on elsewhere. And in this case, when the trick is finally pulled off, it's a stunner because the writers did a great job of mixing genres, getting us to trust Agatha, and hiding her in plain sight while spreading our attention elsewhere. If you're a writer and you plan on including a major plot twist in your novel or screenplay, you'd be wise to consider these techniques to get the maximum impact. So I hope this helps. Question of the day, what is your favorite Marvel movie, and who are three opponents in the story that challenge the hero? Let us know in the comments section below. And thank you for watching this video. If you want to support the channel, please pick up a copy of my novel, Bad Parts, if you haven't already. Also, be sure to check out my other videos, hit the like and subscribe buttons for me, share this video with a friend, and as always, remember to keep on writing.